more schnoots, more glutes, more sloots. Welcome, welcome back. <laughs> so, uh, every, so, what I meant by me keeping up with this shit is <laughs> maybe once every couple of months or something, I don't know. So obviously you have a Desu Archive and you you go to trash and you use the, the search function and you search for snoot or fang and you look for the OP posts. I should probably explain that a little better in terms of finding this shit. But uh, that's generally what you should be doing, I guess. So this has been updated a little bit since this is, I think at, at this point, the most up-to-date thread that on here. So there's a couple more stuff, a couple more things here, I should say, that I'm going to have a look through. And uh, the, the Trish mod, uh, the file size has more than doubled from when I played it. So... I don't know if it's like has a complete second chapter to it or how much of it is done and how far it's gonna go. I'll look at that another day. But first, let's watch this tra this uh, trailer for Tracy. The only Tracy I know is Tracy Cage. Ah, uh, good old Tracy Cage. To find a passion in love and life is to find yourself and not a moose. Oh right, that's her name. I forgot what her name was for a second. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. Hell yeah. <laughs> but, uh, what should I look at that? Roberts. What I wanted was Rosa. Is this Rosa? No, that's Roberts. Rosa. Right. I guess that's what we're going to look at first. Unzip it. You can choose Extract All, too, if you don't have 7-Zip. And, and it'll work. It, it'll create this folder the exact same way but yeah copy go to your game folder mods one more thing I will try to use the pinned comment thing more often when it comes to important information because who the hell looks at the description of clicking show more that's that's idiots I mean, I'm I'm just a boomer. Oh right, right. I was I was like, what the fuck is this? Read me. Oh, I I thought I was on this page, and I forgot that I clicked on this one. Okay, paste. Rose, have a look at it. Asset, script, storyline. Okay. But yeah, I'm I'm just a boomer that actually looks at descriptions instead of the pinned comments. My earliest YouTube memory is a. Uh, it's uh, it's a vi video where they somebody took the the sweet victory song from SpongeBob, you know that part, and they kind of edited it, edited the footage to where it fits over the whole song, like the whole complete song instead of like the abridged cut that that episode used man I wonder if that video is still up I should look for it we finally got our Rosa mod I've been looking forward to it for so long 
The fog is thick this morning as I make the trek to Volcano High, silently cursing Trish. It's Saturday today, and it... Oh. <laughs> it's Saturday today, and instead of getting some quality shitposting in, I've got another date with the gardening club. Seems Trish didn't like how close I was getting to her little ba little band, and decided to rat me out to Spears for more torrenting. Ah, <laughs> you don't get that. Jesus. <laughs> I even used a VPN this time. Uh, wait. Okay, so he was using the school computers. <laughs> How did the fuck did he do that? Was it like a... F I don't think you're allowed to... Well, it's a school computer, not a library computer. Library computers have that thing where they reset once you log out to, to a certain... They roll back to a certain state when you log out of it. I don't know if school computers do that. They probably do nowadays, but I don't know if they ever would back then when I was in school. Back in <laughs> elementary. I even used a VPN this time. <laughs> Damn that little purple pain in the ass. <laughs> Ruining my perfectly good weekend just for a little revenge. Sign, I pull my jacket closer around me. A part of me knows that I'm not mad at missing my shitposting time, even if it is prime Euro hours right now. Today, Fang and I had, had made plans to hang out a bit. She said she was going to expose me to some good music. Some good old Mucor. Something about a record store she liked. Reed was going to come along too, so at least Fang had some company today. But her text back this morning seemed pretty bummed. Maybe I can make it up to her. Yeah, why do I feel this way? I turned down the volume, but. guess whoever did the scripting for this or whatever for some reason put that put that on the sound instead of the music but hey at least I figured it out quickly <laughs> instead of taking my headphones out and doing it that way after what feels like an eternity, I finally make it back to the back of the school. The respl resplendent gardens laid out before me. Strangely, there's no sign of Rosa or Stella anywhere. The assembled gardening tools laid out as before, a small group of students standing directionless in front of them. Silently, I join the back of the line, hoping to avoid attention as I whip out my phone hoping to send a quick text to Fang. Before I can finish, Rosa comes storming out of the school, hurrying over. It's not like her to be late to these campus beautification pro projects, and something seems to have upset her. Rosa tries to hide it as she walks to the front of the group, but I catch her wiping her eyes on her palm, clear evidence of tears appearing on her face. Ah, so sorry, everyone. I was dealing with some things. Rosa takes a deep breath to steady herself, clapping her hands together as much to get our attention as to calm her own nerves. What could be the matter? The rose was such a clatter. Rosa starts to hand out gardening equipment as to the assembled crowd, not looking anyone in the eye. Today should go quickly, just some, just some maintenance, and a, new st a student interrupts Rosa, raising their hand. 
uh, Rosa, I think someone wrecked your flowers over there. The yellow ankylosaur pointed over to a section of the garden. The damage even visible from this distance. Wincing, I inspect the damage, having been too distracted with my thoughts to notice beforehand. Seems some jokers went around and smashed all of Rosa's red, red camellias, leaving the evidence scattered all over. I glance quickly over to Rosa, expecting to see her grow, growing as red as the flowers with indignant rage. Instead, she just stands there, her shoulders, her shoulders sagged, her face a picture of misery. I don't... Did she make that face before? Where, where it's curled downwards? Whenever she opened her mouth before, it was... Her mouth was curled upwards, I think. Or am I crazy? I'll, I'll look at the PNGs later. <laughs> I don't know. Rosa, Rosa sniffed, trying to keep her tears at bay. The assembled students, sh students shift their feet awkwardly, glancing at one another. Could one of them be the culprit? Glancing back to Rosa, I can tell she's I can tell she's close to breaking down, too distraught to direct the students. Hey, uh, why don't I help you, Rosa? Good, someone is stepping up to do the right thing. Wait, that someone is me. <laughs> the words someone leaving the words someone leaving my mouth before I knew what I was doing. For some reason, an image of Principal Spears flashes in my mind as I think about what I just said. The other students turn to stare at me, their surprise evident on their faces. Rosa glances towards me, wiping another tear away as she shoots me a sad smile. Gracias, Adam. Okay, everyone else, those weeds and vines won't clean themselves. Go, rapita. <laughs> Rosa seems to regain a little composure as she shoes as as she shoes the rest of the students to their chores, leaving me standing there alone. Taking another steady breath, Rosa hands me a trowel before collecting her own bag of tools, the both of us setting off over to clean up the damaged flowers. You didn't need to do that, Adam. Oh, Siento, <laughs> something in my eyes today. Scrubbing an arm across her eyes, Rosa laughs silently, slightly, trying to hide her embarrassment. Watching her out of the corner of my eye, I mumble something non-committal in response. Try not to notice how puff puffy Rosa's eyes are. From the look looks of them, she had something in her eyes all morning. A part of me knows I shouldn't pry, but something else, a much larger part of me, is dying to make sure she's okay. Damn you, Spears. Damn you! Rosa, are you okay today? You're, uh, you seem kinda... I mean, your eyes are, uh... My words trail off under Rosa's intense stare as we walk, walk across the pavement of the garden. It didn't even dawn on me that this may not be something Rosa wanted to share with me. A total stranger she's only met, like one time before. But before I can stammer out an apology, Rosa's eyes soften, a genuine smile sp spreading across her face. Oh, Nina, you are so sweet to ask. It's just some things at home aren't so good, comprende? By now, we've made it to the damaged flowers, petals and stems scattered all over the pavement. Rosa heaves a massive sigh as she surveys the damage. Talking seems to be helping Rosa cope with the destruction of her prized camellias, and I nod for her to continue as we kneel down to begin removing the refuse. <clears throat> oh, me familia. 
they are always worrying about me so much. They always think they can hide when they are hurting. Rosa trails off, her crimson eyes gazing absently as she collected the remains of the flowers. Her hands rever reverently holding each one before placing it in a pile. I can barely focus on clearing my own section. Instead, watching Rosa as, she, as the words spill out, I can see fresh tears in her eyes. Mi madre, she is the worst. She thinks I don't notice how thin she is, how her hands shake when she is in the kitchen. A sudden sob co cuts off the rest of Rosa's story, and already hot tears are flowing down her face. I just... I just want her to be okay, Annan. Oh, jeez. I'm, uh... I'm ill-equipped to handle this level of real talk. My conversation skills much more tuned to flinging insults on a f on a Finnish butter churning encyclopedia. A faint memory of my original plan, made when I moved here, flashes across my mind as I move a little closer to Rosa. I put a hand on her shoulder gingerly, and Rosa takes my hand gladly in hers, giving it a squeeze. So much for keeping under the radar. I'm sorry, Rosa. I'm, I'm so sorry. And before I know it, Rosa has her face buried in my chest, her body shaking with sobs as, as she holds onto my shoulders with her gloved hands. This close, I can smell her, a pleasant scent of sweat and earth, undercut with a sweet floral smell that must be her shampoo. I've moved my hands to her back awkwardly, trying to... <laughs> There, there, there. <laughs> trying to comfort her while also trying not to rake my dirty gloves through her long hair. I can't help but think Rosa really does have some beautiful hair. <sighs> the comforting sounds of the alarms. There they are again. Uh, Rosa, if you ever want to, you know, talk and stuff, I can give you my number and we can text or, uh, or something like that, I guess. <laughs> what the fuck am I doing right now? God damn it. Hiccuping, Rosa pulls away from my chest, and I can already feel a wet spot where her face was pressed. Her horn snoot is wet with snot. <laughs> Her mascara is, uh, leaving rib... How the fuck do you pronounce that? Rivel... Rivels, whatever the fuck. I don't know how to pronounce that. Of black, of black, down her orange face. Her big crimson eyes are bloodshot and puffy from crying, shimmering with tears as she glances up at me. A curious expression lights up her face as she sniffs once more, a mix of sadness, gratitude, and happiness. Rosa flashes me another sad smile, the alarms in my head cranking up in volume. Oh, Adnan, you ch- You chico dog. what the fuck? <laughs> what could that possibly mean? Wait, did that say Chico? No, that said Chico. Okay. Oh, you fool boy. <laughs> oh, Amnon, you Chico Tonto. If you wanted my number, you just had to ask. Rosa punctuates this with a small laugh, again scrubbing an arm across her eyes. Oh, look at me. Sorry, Antastasre. Let me get a tissue. 
Rosa turns to fumble around in her bag on her hands and knees. As I try my hardest not to notice, oh, just, just how nice her backside looks. <laughs> what the fuck? Ugh. I'm supposed to be consoling her, not checking her out. Dumb shit. Dumb, dumb shit. <laughs> Withdrawing a small packet of tissues, Rosa turns back, uses one to wipe her eyes, and she catches her breath. I'm such a mess today. Oh, Dios mio, Anna, your shirt. Worry crosses Rosa's face as she points a gloat finger at my chest. Glancing down, I expected a few wet stains from Rosa's sobs. Nothing that major. Instead, her mascara has stained the front of my shirt. Goopy black smears covering my chest. Let me clean it for you, Adam. Instinctively, I lean back, away from Rosa's outthrust tissue. No, Rosa, that's that's okay. Uh, I'm, I'm, really, I'm fine. It's not. Whoa, whoa, whoa. In my haste to back away from Rosa, I had forgotten just how damn clumsy I was falling over backwards. Here we go. <laughs> Expecting to run to, to my chest. Rosa also pitched herself over, and the both of us fell into a heap. Rosa and I staring face to face as she, as she landed chest first on top of me. Warning! Warning! Oh, oh goodness, oh goodness me. Oh dear. Oh my. Warning! Warning! We are now at DEFCON 1! Spaghetti overload! Sprawled there, it's all I can it's all I can do to look Rosa in the eye as she stares back at me. Her bright crimson orbs <laughs> locked into mine. Desperately, I try not to think about how well Rosa's chest cushioned her fall. About, about how the hair spilling over her face is framing her face perfectly, about how close her lips are to mine. The seconds seem to drag on into infinity as I lie there, Rosa on top of me, feeling her staccato heartbeat matching mine. I can feel my body start to relax slightly, feel my mouth moving almost subconsciously towards Rosa's. Watching th through half-closed eyes as Rosa does the same, Uh-oh. Rosa's my friend! A friend! What about Fang? What about Fang? Uh, are you two okay? My eyes snap open in an instant, the question immediately breaking the spell. The same ankylosaur from before, standing above us, their eyebrows raised quizzically, a pair of shears <laughs> held disinterested in one hand. Rosa pushes herself up, a grunt escaping my lips as she drives her weight into my stomach. She hauls me up with ease, her powerful arms nearly pulling my own out of their sockets. I can see her face turning bright red, the heat coming off of mine, letting me know I matched her, sh her shade for shade. At once we both blather something out, each of us talking over the other. I see, see, we were, we were just, I just fell and, uh, and it needed some help getting up and, uh, Rosa just made sure I was okay. Uh, our excuses die out as we stand there sheepishly, trying not to catch each other's eye. The ankle of Sorna just nods, a sly smile, splitting their face as they turn back to their trimming. Awkward seconds tick by as I stand there trying to avoid Rosa's gaze, glancing her, her way out of the corner of my eye. I am such a dumbass. It's, it's, oh god. 
glancing her way out of the corner of my eye. She looks a mess. An errant twig is caught in her hair, and her face is still streaked, streaked with mascara. But even as I glance at her, she does the same to me, the beginnings of a smile curling the corners of her mouth as she does, as she does so. Coughing, Rosa turns once again to her bag, her sudden, her sudden bending over and driving my eyes straight up into the sky. My face reddening forward. When she turns back, I can see she has her phone with her, a little red flower dangling from the strap. Can I get your number, Anon? She stammers as she holds her phone app to me. The smile now she now sports, making her face light up. Taking her phone with a shaky hand, I stammer out something as I punch my name and number into her phone. The default language being set to Spanish, making it take slightly longer. Uh, sure, Rosa, just text me whenever you want to talk. I mean, if you do want to. Uh, that is, you don't, you don't have to, but... Uh, my words trail off as I hand Rosa her phone back, flashing her what I hope is a nervous smile. Her smile deepens as she takes her phone back, our hands touching briefly as she does so. Something about Rosa makes me unable to look away, her deep crimson eyes pulling me full, further into her. I can sense her kindness in that glance can feel her love for others in that smile. I want nothing more than to make sure nothing hurts her ever again. It's a deal, Anon. Bye. Why did that sound like a date? Sorry, just making sure. It's been a few days since my close encounter of the Rosa kind took place at the school garden. I've been feeling different ever since. Like something inside of me slowly is slowly filling up with something. Any tension that may have arisen from Fang deciding they want to play guitar instead of bass seems to have evaporated. <laughs> oh, these fleeting feelings coming and going as they please. And the band has been in a frenzy, practicing with renewed vigor. Everything was going well until... Hola, Anna. Can we talk after school? I really need someone to talk to. I froze, standing in the middle of the school hallway, several students shouldering their way past me angrily. Since our almost kiss, Rose and I have been texting back and forth, most of it pretty basic stuff. I was afraid to ask about her family again, worried that, worried that it might upset her. Even I knew that sort of thing should be talked should be talked about in person, but a selfish part of me had hoped that by avoiding the issue, something everything would just work itself out, like it always does. Sure, uh, where do you want to meet? There's a restaurant in the Old Town that I like to go. Want to meet there? Old Town, huh? It's Old Town Road. That's the part of town that lies right at the edge, popular with the Hispanic and Latino dinos. By bus, it'll take me a while to make it there, and I've got a pretty important assignment for Mr. Carl to finish tonight. Eh, fuck it. If Rosa needs to talk to someone, yeah, it's gotta be important. I'll be there. Oh, gracias, Sanon. I'll send you the address. Looking forward to it. Later that day. I end up needing to take two buses to make sh make it to the address, Rosa text. texted. My mind racing as the Volcadera streets rushed by, unseen. I keep telling myself to relax, that Rosa just needed someone to talk to, probably about her mother. I don't think she told anyone else about that, even Stella. So it was natural to, so it was natural to confide in me, right? I mean, it wasn't a date or anything. A date. 
<laughs> Goodness. Oh, I was just getting some food. Some authentic Mexican cuisine. With a girl. Hark the alarms. Who I almost kissed the other week. I really wish those alarms would shut the fuck up. <laughs> just, just put that filter over, over that picture you found on Google. Uh, <laughs> I wonder what filter it is specifically. The sun had warmed up considerably as I walked the streets of Old Town. A sudden early spring heat wave causing me to sweat profusely. I tried to ignore the odd looks passer me, kept, sh kept shooting me. It was, it was pretty rare for a human to be in Old Town alone, let alone who was as white as I was. I'm just a, just a pale little white boy, don't mind me. I can't hurt nobody. Hurrying along, I finally made it to the place Rosa mentioned, an old brick brick carrier. A half dozen or so sm small plastic tables and chairs set up around the entrance. A poorly painted depiction of a Dino Palsy character, yes! Oh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, would you grill with Goku? Yeah, would you eat Goku's burgers and hot dogs? They always deliver. They're, they always deliver on shit like that. And I appreciate it. A poorly painted depiction of a Dino Ball Z character towers on one side of the building. A muscle-bound Saurian is golden crest, bristling with energy. <laughs> Pulling my phone out to let Rosa to let Rosa know that I'm here, I pause to snap a picture of the faded yet surprisingly well painted figure. <laughs> Man, the boys on the Ithotopian knitting smoke signal system aren't gonna believe this shit. <laughs> that reminds me, I couldn't tell you where this shit is exactly, like, but um. Do you know the, the never-ending story and, you know, like the... I haven't watched those movies, at least the first two, in years and years, ever since I was really small. And I think it was in school that I watched them, at least one of them. Uh, like, you know, like the the dragon thing from that? I think it's supposed to be a dragon. There's a, there's a billboard... A fucking billboard on the side of the the highway. Well, it's kind of a highway. I don't know. Side of the road, and it's of it's the head of that character with like it's either red or green eyes, and it says and the the sign says follow me for CBD. <laughs> yeah, just because it's high as fuck. I'm not joking. That shit's real. Uh, God, I, I next time I head over, I can't just go there whenever I want, but when I get the chance, remind me, every video I upload, remind me to do it, because my notifications are turned on for comments. Remind me to take a picture of that shit, because that shit's hilarious. They're not going to believe this shit, let me tell you. <laughs> Evidence logged, I take one final look around for Lo Rosa before suddenly someone careens into my back, their powerful arms pinning my own to the sides. To my sides. And <laughs> there you are. Dios me, you took your sweet time, Bagoo. Bagoo. Let go. I should have done this from the beginning. Vague. Oh, there's other 
translations. Big idol. Sla slacker. Oh, it's like an adjective and then noun. Okay. You slacker. Okay, that's basically what she's she means. <laughs> Lazy bones. Okay, yeah, that. Yeah, there's frequency and all that. That makes a lot more sense. You took your sweet time, Vago. My fear subsides me as I notice that it's Rosa hugging me from behind. I can tell by the force she's exerting that she's happy to see me, and this feeling of her ample bosom pressing against my back is making me very happy to see her. Is that the burrito in your pocket, or are you just happy to see me? Rosa spins me around by the shoulders until I'm facing her, flashing me a beaming smile before hugging me again, resting her head on my chest. And I'm, I'm really glad you're here. My arms wrap up, wrap up. My arms wrap awkwardly around her back as I return the hug. Of, of course, Rosa. So, was this place any good? I, I ask, flashing Rosa a smile as we break apart. Knowing full well that with it, that with an anime character on the side, there's no way this place can be bad. Rosa catches on to my little jibe, elbowing me in the ribs while laughing. Oh, see, see, I'm on. This is the best in all, all of Old Town. Come on, let's get in line. This place fills up, fa fills up fast. Before I can make a move, Rosa grabs my hand before e eagerly tugging me inside. I can feel my heartbeat quicken as she takes my hand. Hear the alarm bell. Hear the alarm bells starting to sound in my head once more. Inside of the Takeria is cramped, with more tables taking up most of the space inside. A menu lists what I assume is the food, the handwritten Spanish completely incomprehensible to me. True to Rosa's word, a line has already started to form, a few customers glancing back at us as we take, it, take out spots at the end of the line. So, uh, how's the... The, the, the tacos. I try to mouth mouth out the syllables to one of the items, sending Rosa into another fit of laughter. She's still holding my hand. Oh, uh, Emmon, don't worry. I can order for us, no problem. Uh, Rosa gives me another smile, her crimson eyes twinkling in the flor fluorescent lighting. A long moment passes, each of us staring at the other before finally snapping back to reality. Oops. There goes gravity. Blushing, Rosa drops my hand, quickly crossing her arms beneath her breast as she attempts to hide her embarrassment. We make small talk for the rest of the wait about our classes, how the garden is doing. As we share with each other, I realize just how nice hanging out with Rose is. She's... Th th that... Those two words have been completely ruined. Just... Just... Just completely ruined, my god. She's cute and funny, twirling her hair around with one finger as she listens to me talk. Equally at ease, talk, talking about... Oh, oh, no, oh, goodness gracious. Oh, no, I just realized. Oh, dear. Twirling her hair around one finger as she listens to me talk. Equally at ease about talking about herself. E equally at ease talking about herself as she is asking about my own life. 
Somehow, she manages to pull more out of me than, than I've shared with even Fang and the gang. Stories of my life and my parents coming out as naturally as any ship post. The waiting line passes by in a flash, and one hurried order in Spanish later, Rosa and I take a seat outside, settling next to each other in the weather-worn plastic seats. So, Rosa, <coughs> what did you want to talk about? When you texted, I mean. I've been dreading this question, but the longer I talked about my own family back home in Rock Bottom, the more I knew I had to ask. My, my suspicions are confirmed, as Rosa's face falls, and I hate myself for how sad she looks now, resisting the urge to throw my arm around her to comfort her. Rosa heaves a heavy sigh before beginning to speak, fidgeting with her bracelet as she does. It's me madre, Annan. She's driving me crazy. All she says is, Rosa, when, you are, when are you going to finish school so you can help us at work? Rosa, why haven't you bought, brought any nice, nice boys home yet? Well, we took care of one more of those problems. <laughs> Let me tell you that. Okay, okay, I, I, I jest. My heart does another flutter jump at that, but I keep silent, letting Rosa vent out her frustrations. Rosa begins gesturing, gesturing angrily with her hands as she goes on, waggling her finger at her, at her imaginary mother. But when I ask her about her pain, offer, offer to help, it's just, no, 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 this is, this is my problem. There's, or is there no problem? I'll, I'll type that in and translate it for you in the editing. I know something is wrong, but she won't let me in. Deflating a little, Rosa drops her hands back to the table with a thump, her gaze following them dejectedly. I don't know what to do. The one persona, the one persona I want to help the most, and she doesn't let me. A lull appears in the conversation, and I know this is my moment to speak up. Hoping my palms aren't too sweaty, need spaghetti. <laughs> I will reach over to take Rosa's hand, giving her a little squeeze of encouragement. Rosa, I'm, I'm sorry you have to go through with that. It sounds harsh. But you can't force these things. You, you can't make people let you in. You have to let them let you in, you know? I stumble over my words as Rosa looks up to me, looks up at me, her beautiful eyes shimmering with un, unshed tears. Her hand squeezes mine back. I maybe don't know what you're going through, and maybe no one's cared, cared for me like this before, but what I mean is, you're, you're lucky to have someone who loves you like that. Maybe just by loving them back, that's, that's enough, you know? Rosa is silent as she stares up at me, clearly thinking on what I've just said. Moments pass, and I know well enough to shut up and be quiet to let Rosa work out what she's feeling. Rosa breaks the silence at last, her voice catching slightly. You do have people who care about you, Anon. Suddenly, Rosa pulls her hand out of mine, reaching up to take either either side of my face. Her image work in progress. Her face rises to meet mine as she pulls me down, planting her mouth on mine with, with, in a kiss. <laughs> uh, if that ever changes, I'll see if I can just put it in a future video just to show it. Warning! Warning! We are now being smooched by a cute Latina dino. A cute, 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 a c
cutie. Don't see that dino. I'm so taken aback. It's it's all I can do for a second to ju just let Rosa kiss me. It's awkward at first, her beaky snoot making it difficult for her to get her lips on mine properly. But then my surprise fades, and I kiss her back. A slow, soft kiss that seems to go on forever. My eyes close, letting me fall into the kiss entirely, until it's all I can feel, wanting with all my heart for it to never end. All thought is banished by the kiss, replaced entirely with Rosa. Beautiful, loving, sweet Rosa. Ah. We finally break apart, our lips clinging together for a split second before we settle back, eyes opening. It feels like I've just run a hundred miles. My Heart fit to burst as it thunders in my chest. Rosa still holds my face in her hands. Her eyes staring deeply into mine. This close, I can see every facet of those crimson eyes sparkling like gems in her, in her kind face. A sudden <laughs> grins... <laughs> <laughs> a sudden grin splits Rosa's face, and I find myself sporting one equally as large. Giggling, we start to lean into each other once more, our eyes slowly closing. The, the second kiss is as sweet as the first, and yet there is an, there's an intensity behind it. As if some unspoken agreement, agreement has passed between us, and the kiss is the means by which we seal the deal. This time, I take Rosa's face in my hands as well, making sure to scrub them on my jeans. <laughs> making sure to scrub them on my jeans beforehand. <sighs> get, my, get that sweat off. <laughs> Our second kiss lasts longer than the first. Neither of us willing to break it off, but eventually Rosa pulls away, resting her forehead on mine. Oh, it's too special. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll again translate that. Oh, eso es todo bueno. It was very, very nice. You're, you're a natural at this, my goodness. Rosa's whisper is nearly silent against the no noise of the street. A quiet prayer uttered but for only the two of us to hear. Moving her hands away from my face, she takes both of mine, holding them together between between us as she sits back. I care about you, Anon. You are the stupid humano that makes me feel the prettiest Danita in the world. And I like that. Rosa flashes another of her smiles, the one that fills her whole face with joy. I like that a lot. The rest of the day passes by in a blur. Food was eventually brought out, Rosa having ordered the both of us a selection of her favorite tacos. Fuck yeah, dude. Tacos. <laughs> She even ordered mine with real meat, sparing me the tofu and soy replacements that she usually ate. What a sweetheart. Eventually, luckily, Rosa picked the perfect spot for our first for our first date, as we could eat the tacos with one hand holding each other holding the other's hand underneath the table. The Super Siren on the side didn't lie either. They really were the best tacos I ever had. <laughs> Thanks, Goku. I appreciate it. Afterwards, Rosa offered to drive me home. Apparently, she had forgotten that I didn't have a car, and, she, and the thought of me taking the buses home this late worried her to no end. 
I gave Rosa an address not too far from where I had usually lived. Still not wanting her to know that I had lived in the shithole that was Skin Row. Rosa gave my hand another squeeze before I got at the car, smiling as I placed a cast chist, cast one word that you say is going to completely ruin the other word you say right, right after. A chast kiss on her, on her cheek. See you tomorrow, Rosa. See you tomorrow, mi novio. It's been a few weeks since my first date with Rosa. Saying my first date still feels weird. It's something I never imagined I would accomplish. Let alone with someone like Rosa. Who would have thought me, a loser determined to stay under the radar, landing a beautiful Latino Dino GF? Too bad I'll probably ruin my chance at wizardry. Zap, 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 zap. <laughs> Man, if, if I turn into a wizard, I know exactly what my theme song's gonna be. started hanging out with her and Stella Moore, sometimes mixing in with the rest of the Fang Gang. Rosa and Reed hit it off right, right off the bat. Turns out the guy knows a thing or two about growing plants. Who would have thought? Even Stella was getting along after I forbid her from talking about anime all the time. Ugh. I've worked too hard to hide my power level just to let her come in and blow it. Surprisingly, Trish was the most encouraging of me and Rosa. At least she congratulated a skinny loser like me on getting a girl while clapping me, clapping me on the shoulder. Well, punching me on the shoulder. Fuck, I've still got a bruise. Honestly, I think she's just glad I'm out of her nappy hair for once. The only thing who wasn't the only one who wasn't who wasn't happy was Fang. They'll, they'll interrupt our practice. They'll just get in our way. Guess I forgot how Fang feels about most people. All that talk of weeds choking out the plants. Sometimes I catch Fang giving me a sidelong look, a sidelong look in class. I wonder if I'm a weed to her now. Rose and I agreed to meet up before school. It's my favorite part of the day, seeing her for the first time. I've even stopped shit posting before before school just to get some more time with her. Funny how those that type of thing works, isn't it? The way her face lights up when she sees me in the halls. The way she gives my hand a little squeeze as a greeting. It's enough to make a man weak. Ah, oh, Hannon, you're going soft. Zzz. Uh, just my phone. I can already feel my heart skipping beats as I check my text, hoping it's from Rosa. Wait, a text from Fang? I'm gonna look for a new band venue this weekend. Everyone, everyone else bailed. I don't want to go solo. You want to come? Guess I'm not a weed after all. Sure. This weekend, huh? I wonder if Rosa wouldn't mind coming along. The three of us hanging out. Sounds like fun. Surely nothing will go wrong. I, I, I assure you, nothing could possibly go wrong. Fang's next message stops me dead. 
Just you, though. Don't bring Rosa or Weebosaurus. Just me. What's with her? First, she doesn't want Rosa and Stella hanging around band practice, but now this. First, she did If I didn't know better, I'd say Fang was. Hola, Anon! Hastily shuffling my phone back in my pocket, I turned to face her. Hey, Rosa. I've not yet managed to silence my alarms when, whenever we're together, but I can ignore them for now. Hey, Rosa. I lean in to give her a peck on the cheek, but before I can, she stops me with a finger to the lips. Rosa? Anna, wait, I need to talk to you. I can feel my blood start to run cold. Oh? Oh, fuck. I've read enough manga to know what this means. Hopefully I can keep my voice steady. What about? Any attempts I make, make to stay calm are betrayed by my free-falling heart. Well, Alan, it's a little embarrassing. My, my familia heard about you and me the other day. The other day? We just got tacos. And made out in a public space. Now, me papi once it was happy I finally had a boy. Rosa catches herself at the last second. Oh man, she's blushing as red as her eyes. But me madre, well, oh, uh oh. Rosa looks down for a moment. Let's just say she wasn't too happy about me kissing a boy, especially one who... One of them filthy humans. <laughs> Her voice trails off for a moment, but I think I can fill in the blanks. One who isn't a dino? Surprisingly, Rosa breaks out in a laugh. It's sweet and unexpected, but Rosa has to cover her mouth to stifle her giggles. I'd say it was the cutest thing she's done. If she di didn't also slug me in the shoulder as well. Jesus fuck, right in the bruise too. Oh god. No, I'm on stupido. My heart stops free falling. One who doesn't share our faith. How could you possibly know that? Jesus, this again? I guess we probably had this conversation with each other before then. Oh wait, I just got that. Rosa, I'm sorry I don't share your... I have to hold back my tongue. Years of baiting idiots on a Turkish arts and crafts bill billboard had pro programmed me to react to religion in a certain way. I'm sorry, I, I just don't believe in this Christ cuckery. I, I'm sorry, I just... <laughs> uh, your belief. Is that a, is it gonna be a problem? I let my gaze fall to my feet, envisioning the best relationship I've ever had fall apart because I didn't believe in a magic dino in the sky. Ugh. And then, Rosa takes a step closer to me. Slowly she touches my chin, pulling my eyes to meet hers. Her crimson eyes twinkle in the fluorescent light of the hall. All these fluorescent lights. Her face, her face a picture of concern. Anon, I don't want this to end. I like you, Anon, a lot. I'm sure if I could just take you to see my madre, you would get all get along. The idea of meeting a woman who can so easily sway someone like Rosa is not something I want to dwell on. But right now, she's, uh... <clears throat> Rosa's voice falters for a moment. Right now, her, that's right, her mom's health. 
Here I am worrying about if we can be together, and Rosa is probably worrying if her mom is going to be okay. I feel like such a dick. I used the lull in our conversation to take Rosa's hand in mine and giving it a little squeeze. Rosa, I don't want this to end either. If it would help, I guess I could. I don't know. What is what is it that good old Christian Donos do? Church, I guess. I don't know what it what they could possibly do. Go to church or something with you. Oh my God. Oh, that's that's a recipe for disaster. If I if I ever heard one. Go to church or something with you. Nailed it. Although giving up my Sundays isn't ideal, I'm sure I can just play along for her mom's sake. Rosa's eyes light up, and before I can react, she's wrapping me at, wrapping me in a big hug. Oh, Anna, that is so sweet. I'm sure me madre would understand if you just gave it a chance. Ah, oh, goodness gracious. She's wonderful. She stops before, before squeezing all the life out of me. <clears throat> I'm suddenly very aware we're standing very close together. Our face is just inches apart. And this means I get to spend more time with you. My heart starts doing acrobatics again. Some, so, something I always want to do. Rosa bites the corner of her lip, her hand still lingering on my lower back. All I need to do is lean in and... The school bell breaks a spell with a cacophony of noise. Fuck. Cocked blocked by the clock. Ugh. Oh. Clock blocked. <laughs> Oh, I love it. I love it so much. La laughing, Rosa gives my hand a squeeze, adjusting the straps of her bag with her other hand. If I didn't know better, I'd say she was blushing too. Uh, I guess we'll have to see each other again sometime. I'll text you in class later, okay? I squeeze her hand in response. Sounds good, Rosa. Rosa turns away with a smile, leaving me standing awkwardly in the middle of the hallway. Guess I've got to add going to church to the list of things I never thought I would be doing. I don't know which is more believable, that or the fact that I'm going with a girl. Rosa and I texted for the entire day. It was Friday, so most classes weren't giving out ho homework anyways. Thankfully, Fang seemed more her usual self in the classes we shared. She even teased me that I'd never be able to survive Rosa's cooking. Ugh, I'll wash myself with a rag on a stick. It was nice going back to the way things were before between Fang and me. Like we were frame, friends again. Just friends. So why does it feel so awkward when I'm around her? That time on the roof when she and I... When I think on the, of that day, my insides feel like they want to squirm out of my mouth. But when I think of Rosa, I feel the same way. <sighs> Fuck. High school was supposed to be easy. I wasn't supposed to land a girl, let alone friends. I wasn't supposed to care. My weekend passed by in a blur. As agreed, I met up with Fang on Saturday to find a new venue for the band. Nazar and Naomi insisted on tagging along. Although I suspect they only came because Fang's dad was going to kill me otherwise. Would have Listen, it would have been worth it, let me tell you. <laughs> 
He and her mom definitely thought it was a de date. Which it wasn't. We were just hanging out. Besides, if it was that thing, which it certainly wasn't, it almost ended in disaster. Naomi kept prying into my relationship with Rosa, asking all sorts of stupid questions. How we were doing, if our differences were causing trouble. She was totally trying to manipulate me into saying something, but Fang told her to shut the fuck up. Honestly, Fang seemed frazzled by the whole thing. By the time we found a place place to play, Dino Mo's, her would-be uncle P uncle's pizza place, I thought Fang was gonna choke Naomi with her own tongue. Just, just, just push it down, down as far as it'll go. Oh, just, 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 just. Mash it in there. <laughs> just... Fang barely said goodbye to me that night, mumbling her thanks as her dad practically slammed the door in my face. Sunday wasn't much better either. Rosa's mom ended up being too sick to come come to the service, so she and Rosa's dad stayed home. The chance to be alone with Rosa would have normally been a dream come true. Except for the fact that it was entirely spent listening to an old bag of bones prattle on about made up religious junk in Spanish. Longest three hours of my life. <laughs> okay, we're not going to dwell on that part. Let's just move on. <laughs> Listen. There's there's a lot of potential for comedy gold in that situation, let me tell ya. It was almost a relief when Monday came around. Rose and I may not get to see each other much, what with her family, but at least at school we can spend some time together. Even if Stella happens to be there as well. This fucking Sonic Unleashed music I'm here right now. Jeez. The three of us were eating lunch, the band having taken this time to practice. It was only a few days until their concert, so they were making the most of it. Rose and I were holding hands underneath the table. A habit we picked up since our first date. Too bad it made eating impossible. I still worry that they are practicing too hard. I turned my attention away from the paradox of how one cuts one's lunch with one hand. It must be difficult practicing when no one wants to see. Rose's voice trailed off. It was true, the band's first concert hadn't gone very well. Okay, it tanked. Uh, but surely they've improved, right? I chime in, having abandoned all attempts to cut my stank with the cafeteria issue spork knife hybrid. The three in one holds up spork knife hybrid. At least they aren't using that god awful double base setup. I mentally cringe, remembering when Reed, rip, Reed whipped out his phone to show everyone a recording of Worm Drama's early days. Ouch. I'm sure they'll be fine. Rosa gives me a look, the same one she always does when I blaspheme in front of her. God awful. Still, Anon, is there nothing we can do? Rosa, relax. Stella's overly cheerly, cheery voice. Cheerly. Cheerly, cheerly. I want to meet you after school. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Tell you that you're cool. <laughs> Stella's overly cheer, cheer, cheer. Would I read it and then I... 
then my mind wants to say what I'm reading and it fucks me up when it's a typo of some kind. At least I think that's a typo. It looks like it. Stella's overly cheerily, cheery voice came from between the sips of some imported Japanese soda. Mmm, tastes like roses. One I pretended not to know. I carry some pocky sticks or whatever they're called in my pocket at all times. <laughs> I did a tarot reading the other day asking about their show. The results were very fair, very fair, very favorable. Stella takes another smug sip of soda. <laughs> Acting as if her tarot reading ensured the band's success. Rosa waggled her finger at Stella, a gesture she often did when Stella's tarot readings came up. There's got to be something besides your Diablo worship we can do, though. Maybe if we went around school handing out invites and... I recognize that tone. If I didn't step in, Rosa would have a plan to bring the entire school to the concert, and probably to church afterwards, if only out of guilt. We'll just have to be there to support Fang and the band. I hope Rosa didn't read into that at all. And speaking of being there, uh... This was my moment of truth. I'd been meaning to ask Rosa officially to the concert for a while now, but I never imagined, uh, man, never managed to work up the nerve. It was now or never. Ne now or never. Rosa, did you want a good start? You know, getting dicey and push through it. Uh, I realize I've been staring at my food this whole time. Concert go me with. Oh fuck, abandoned ship. Spaghetti overload. Glancing, glancing shyly at Rosa. I see she's got a big grin on her face. You know, if I didn't know any better, I'd say you were asking me to go to the concert with you. She gives my hand a squeeze. At this rate, I want a face plant into my food. I'm sure with how hot my face feels, I could reheat this, the thing a bit. Jeez, was it that obvious? Rosa covers her mouth with her spare hand. Oh, no say, I, I kinda liked it. I swear. You're laughing. I'm fumbling over my words, and you're laughing. I swear to God, she's laughing. I just asked... <laughs> I, I just asked you out the Fang's concert, and you're laughing. See, how will go with you, Anon. I'm just glad you asked me before I asked you. Rose's crimson eyes locked in with mine, filled as always with the sweetest promises I could imagine. At once, she makes me feel silly for feeling nervous to ask her. And like I've got butterflies instead of intestines. I need to see a doctor about that part. I need to get that checked out. It's a good date, I guess. I hope she found my stammers endearing instead of cringy. So much for being a smooth operator. But hey, she agreed to go out with me. I'm, I'm really gonna rub this, in, rub this in on my usually Br Brazilian pottery use net tonight. Fucking Brazilians. Oh, my God. An ear-splitting squee from Stella interrupts the moment. You guys are so cute. One of these... Wait, what did that say? <laughs> Why 
What are you going to wear, Rosa? Rosa stammers, a blush spreading across her face. I think... Oh, hey, I got this super cute outfit you could borrow. It would look totally great on you, I promise. Gracias. <laughs> I was gonna wear it, but then I realized I had actually, I actually already worn it on another day, and I turned my attention back to the food, chuckling, unlike Sonic. What's the saying? Guys, don't get between your girlfriend and her best friend, or something. Especially when it comes to clothes. Huh. My girlfriend. Feels kind of nice to say. The night of the concert approached quickly. I agreed to show up early to help set up. Rosa would have joined me, but Stella convinced her to come by later. Fang seemed pretty on edge the day before, going on and on about making sure the show was perfect. We agreed that too many people helping set up would just end up slowing things down. I could tell the band was nervous. Fang kept triple check. Fang kept triple checking everything, and Trish had to hardly yell at me tonight. Tonight, Reed seemed the only only relaxed one at first, until we found out he chugged the entire contents of his thermos beforehand. Despite all this, the stage looked great, except for the trailing wires everywhere. I offered to fix them, but Reed assured me no one was going to trip on them. I don't like where this is going. I, oh, everything was about to go to shit, <laughs> let me tell you. I guess I trust them. I guess I should make one final check before joining the crowd. Fang was backstage, tuning her strings for the 100th time. I should probably try and ease her nerves. You know, if you keep playing with that, you'll go blind. She glances my way, flashing me a quick smile and an upraised middle finger. Her cocky attitude is portrayed by the way she's practically strangling the neck of the guitar, of her guitar. Is that what your mom always told you, Dweeb? Yes. Now she said my palms would grow hairy, actually. I hold my hands up to her palms up. See? But I'm a good little Christian boy. No hair on these babies. Fang favors my bad joke with a snort. Oh, your mom was full of shit. Her eyes seem to unfocus slightly. Annan, do you think we're ready to play again, I mean? I offer her a supportive smile. Of course, you've been practicing like mad, and you've improved immensely. Fang rolls her eyes. That sounded like an insult to me. I give her my, I give her her own middle finger in response. Seriously, Fang, you guys are gonna do great. Don't fret so much about it. A quick vibration from my pocket interrupts my pet talk. Looks like Rose and Stella are here. They both say good luck, and so do I. Shooting Fang's a thumbs up, I make my way to the door of Moe's back room. Poor Fang, getting cucked all the time. And in the way. Pausing, I see Fang take a step after me. I just wanted to say that. I mean, you've really helped out, and I thought you should. Her wings seemed to vibrate on it with her words. Fang? Ugh, just forget it. Fang gives me a weak smile. Go have fun with Rosa tonight. Smiling back, I give her a final wave before heading out into the main space. Huh. 
Sipping out into the restaurant proper, I was surprised with the crowd that showed up. The place was packed. Throngs of people crowded, the, crowded most of the available space. Mo and Reed had cleared all the tables to the sides, making a little mosh pit in front of the stage that was already buzzing with anticipation. Scanning the room, I finally caught a glimpse of Stella's green space, space buns near the back of the crowd. And in this place looks great. Stella flashes me a big smile when I finally shoulder my way to her. Apparently, whatever fancy outfit she had planned she had planned fell through, leaving her in a familiar white t shirt white shirt jean short combo. Wait, does she know what, what her shirt says? Just focus in and don't think about how well Opie describes Stella and uh She's got a little bit of makeup on. You can kind of see it in, in her eyes a little bit. At least it looks like it to me. Hola, Anon. My, this place looks great. Rosa had finally caught up to us, squeezing through the crowd. And oh my god. Rosa's usual floral print dress was swapped out for a tight red spaghetti strap t crop top and even tighter w waist high jeans. The top's plunging neckline did wonders to expose Ro Rosa's expansive cleavage while also exposing her deliciously toned abs. I'm eating good to that. Her jeans clung to her every curve, helped by her high-heeled pumps, and made her legs and more look amazing. She even sported a smoky gray eye shadow and perfectly curved lashes. I have to say, whoever kind of drew over drew the did the artwork for this mod day they know how to edit a picture let me let me tell you <laughs> and then rosa had even done something to her hair making it twinkly in the lights of, of the restaurant like stars and then jesus help me but she's gorgeous as stupid a tonto at once, I snapped back to reality. What? What? Who? What? Where? When? Real smooth, Annan. You might as well have been panting like a cartoon dog. Let's say Annan likes your outfit, Rosa. Stella guffawed madly until Rosa shot her an evil look. Stella, I told you, this outfit is too much. Too explosion. <laughs> Explosions. Coming down from whatever cloud I had ascended to, I realized that Rosa did look somewhat embarrassed. She kept tugging her too low neckline up to hide her bosom, and then pulling the bottom down to cover more of her stomach. That, that, that contradicts each other. <laughs> whatever. I think you look amazing, Rosa. The sexy Latina stopped her speech halfway in surprise. Even in the dim light of the restaurant, I could see Rosa's blush start to creep up in her upper face. Um, do you think so, Anna? It's not too tight or too short. Nah, it looks perfect. There was an awkward beat where Rosa and I made moony eyes at each other while Stella watched with barely disguised mischief. Well, Rosa, I 
I think I think I see my boyfriend here, so I'm going to go say hi. The green stego gave Rose a hug, one that I probably would need to have a cold, <laughs> one that I would probably would need to have a cold shower afterwards. You two have fun, okay? With a wink in my direction, Stella headed back through the crowd, where an enormous shark-like dinosaur <laughs> scooped her into his arms. Wait, isn't that guy the captain of the football team? And it's good to see you. I had noticed Rosa sidling up to me, the press of the crowd herding us closer together. Yeah, it's good to see you too, Rosa. I was careful to keep my lower half away from Rosa as we hugged. <laughs> Ugh, just... <laughs> Push it down. Oh, Jesus. This is going to be a long, hard night. So, did everything go okay with the setup? Rose and I fell into some small chit-chat as we waited for the band to come on stage. I tried to keep my eyes on her face, but it was difficult in these circumstances. Mercifully, a, a cheer from the crowd drew our intention back to the stage. The members of Worm Drama were taking their places, Trish and Fang giving their guitars one final look over as they did so. Without any warning, the trio launched into their first song of the set, eliciting a roar of approval from the crowd. <coughs> The thrashing savagery of the band quickly drowned out all the normal conversation, leaving the crowd to wordlessly cheer their approval while jumping and dancing in time with the music. Turning back to Rosa, I get her attention while leaning over to shout in her ear, Do you want to dance? An eager nod from Rosa is all I need to take her by the hand closer to the stage. Before long, the two of us are jumping up and down like the rest of the crowd. A glance over to Rosa reveals she's having fun, laughing and cheering the band on in rapid Spanish. The rhythm of our jumping is sending her breast even up and down, and I have to struggle not to gawk. I swear they're going to pop out at this rate. Rosa doesn't seem to care, though. She's too caught up in the music to notice. But not too caught up to notice me checking her out again. I try to stammer out an, uh, an excuse, but she just smiles. A strange mix of embarrassment and self-satisfaction spread on her face. Almost like that's what she wanted to happen. <laughs> The set went on for hours, the crowd finally singing along to Reed's final incomprehensible song as best they could before erupting into a thunderous applause. I, I clap along just as hard as Rosa alternates between cheering in Spanish and whistling with both hands. Before long, Fang gives one final strum before the three of them walk off stage, leaving the crowd exhausted, sweaty, and satisfied. Oh, hang on. They were lovely. Rosa pulls me into a massive hug, pressing her sweaty body against mine. I hug her back, my hands inadvertently stroking her hair. I, I hope she can't tell just how happy I am to see her. And Fang seems so happy on stage. Oh, hang on. I'm, glad, I'm so glad things worked out so well. Rosa, Rosa softens her embrace slightly before settling her chin on my shoulder. Without noticing, we slowly start to turn, our feet shuffling to some imaginary music. I snuggle my sweat-drenched cheek into hers this close, 
I can smell her scent. A heady aroma of sweat <laughs> mixed with her familiar, familiar floral smell. There's something else as well. Some sort of perfume that wasn't there before. That's all I can do not to smell her hair. Instead, I squeeze her tighter against me, feeling the not insignificant weight of her breast <laughs> against my chest. Somewhere deep inside my brain, a part I've long since sealed up and learned to ignore, there's a DEFCON 1 alarm going off. I ignore it. Yeah, that was one hell of a show. Bang really killed it on, the, on that last solo. And you, you victim bucho, you helped it happen. Rosa pulls away from our embrace just along to look me face to face. I mean, all I did was set up some equipment and... No, Anon, you did more than that. Rosa's eyes irradiate earnestness. You helped Fang out when they were having a hard time. You went with them to find a venue, and you helped them set all this up. She sighs a little, bringing one hand up to stroke my cheek. You are a very, very good friend, Anon. Slowly, my hand slipped down to her waist, feeling the sweaty scales beneath my palms. Rosa entwines her arms around my neck, our faces dangerously close to one another. All I can do is stare at her, my mind totally filled with her smell, her looks, her touch. Filled with how beautiful and sexy she, sexy she is, how happy she looks. I had a great time tonight, Hanon. Yeah, me too. Slowly, we lean into each other, mouths getting closer, our bodies still slowly rotating to the music of our hearts. Unfortunately, this rotation means that Rosa can now cease towards the stage. Dios mío, Stella! Did she get, did she get smoshed pit, pitted? <laughs> remember smosh pit? I remember smosh pit. <laughs> what a website. Suddenly leaning into nothing, I barely manage not to fall as Rosa rushes over to her injured friend. Glancing back over my shoulder, I see Stellas lying in a pool of what is hopefully spilled marinara sauce. <laughs> Doing a Seth MacFarlane pose. <laughs> Apparently, things have gotten a little too rowdy. Stella! Stella, es es bien! Rosa taps a little life back into Stella's cheek, eliciting a groan from the smashed stego. <laughs> All those bastardos! <laughs> Rosa begins muttering to herself as she starts to sling Stella's arm over her shoulder. Anon, come help me with her! Stella, I am so sorry. Come, I shall nurse you back at my home. Ugh. I hurry over, the two of us managing to drag Stella through the thinning crowd and into the cool night air. It's not easy, but we finally manage to load Stella into the back of Rosa's car. Is Stella gonna be alright? The cool night air feels nice, a welcome relief after the heat of the dance floor. I still feel flushed as Rosa looks up at me, fiddling with in her, in her, in in th their clutch for her car keys. Sissy, she should be fine. Go tempo to make a I don't know how to pronounce this shit. To handle qua estolesis. Rosa is vivid, almost as angry as when I fell into her fl flowers. <clears throat> Do you need me to help? I could go with you, or, uh, my voice trails off. I can't believe this is how this night ends, with Rosa whisking a concussed Stella off to be nursed back to health. No, no, that's okay, Anon. Rosa sighs before giving me a sad smile. 
I'm sorry to run off on our little date night. I was... Oh, Dios mio. This wasn't how I wanted this night to end. She gives my hand a squeeze. I'll make it up to you, okay? I try to keep this disappointment out of my voice. That's okay, Rosa. Just as long as you had a good time. Rosa nods empathetically. This, besides, I'm sure the band needs a hand putting all their stuff away. I wrap Rosa in one final embrace. Go make Stella better, or something. See if you can cure her weebiness while you're at it. Laughing, Rosa lets me go, fidgeting with keys as I start to turn away. I'll text you later, and the rest of my words are cut off, as is my, as is my world. Rosa grabs my shirt, dragging me towards her, towards her as she leans up to kiss me. And like our tender, trippid kisses before, this one is hard, almost savage. Rosa bites my lips slightly as her long tongue enters my mouth, teasing my own before caressing across the inside of my lips. There's a hunger in her kiss, a sense of wanting something more. Then I kiss back just as hard. Eventually, Rosa settles back down, our lips slowly breaking apart with a sigh. Look in her lips. Rosa plants one more chest kiss on my on the tip of my nose before letting me go. I promise I'll make it up to you, Minovia. I'm too stunned to do anything other than watch her as she walks around to the driver's side of her car. Thanks to me, see? Rosa flashes a mischievous grin before climbing in. With a honk and wave, Rosa dries off, leaving me standing dazed and confused. I raise a hand to my lips, still feeling the press of Rosa's against mine. Smiling, I turn back into the restaurant, no longer disappointed with how tonight ended. She promises, huh? It's been a few weeks since the concert back in February. Things have slowed down for the band, despite Trisha's best efforts, they haven't been able to book any new gigs. She claims a lack of exposure le lead to the small, led to the small crowd at Dynamo's. Her solution? Force me and Reed to trek up and down the city putting up flyers. I think you need to have a... Don't you need, like, a permit to do shit like that? <laughs> it's about time your skinny ass did something for us anyways. Ever since the concert, she's been acting more and more aggressive towards me. Like she found another reason to hate me or something. Normally, I wouldn't mind the opportunity to help, if only to shut Trish up once I did it. But doesn't mean I get but it does mean I get a lot less time with Rosa. Finally halfway through these flyers. I watch idly as Reed finishes stapling a worm drama poster to the side of a telephone. It's a mishmash of shapes, the band's name barely legible, against the green and purple background. That reminds me, I've got to go see the doctor. Whatever improvements the band's made, it hasn't been for, to their image. What do you mean, bro? The post, this poster's like primo excellent. Fucking mumbling again. Is it this before I discovered the mumbling? Whatever. I don't know, Reed. You don't think Trish could have, I don't know, made it a little easier to read? We both step back, staring at that staring at a poster that would make Jackson Pollock nauseous. Even the band's contact and booking info is partially obscured behind the head of a statue. It's like a colorblind person with Parkinson's designed it. Nah, bro. Looks good to me. This coming from the roster rapper. Raptor who once tried to eat his own tank top. Whew. 
Oh. Reed and I continued down the street to the next telephone pole, one already covered in flyers. And why so many? We've been out here for hours now. Does she really think these are going to help get people to show up? She cares about the band, bro. It means a lot to her. Reed leans back and admires his work. I don't have the heart to tell him the flyer is stapled. A flyer is stapled upside down. Besides, like the sooner we uh, hang all these up, the sooner we can like finish, right? Groaning, I hand him up another one. Clearly just pointing out what a waste of time this is, isn't gonna work. Maybe I can try another angle. I just don't get why Trish gets to decide what the band does. Isn't it Fang's band anyways? Shouldn't she be the one who decides things, not Trish? Reed turns to me, his eyes suddenly serious. It's because of Fang that Trish suggested these, bro. <laughs> Whoa, where'd this come from? Reed's usual slurring of his words is gone, replaced by a nice cold intensity. You and Rosa have been hanging out a lot, and that's cool. I can dig a player trying to play. Reed, shut up. I am not in the mood for more karma <laughs> Karma Snutra, that's uh, it's pretty good, I have to say. <laughs> and you guys hang out and do like couple stuff and all that. But Fing, well, music, the band, it's all they have. Another gig like our first one would crush them, man. Fang's words from the roof drift back to me. Not once, after all the work I've put into warm drama, has anyone ever told me it was good. You didn't see how it was before, when it was just the three of us. All that time spent practicing, working on our songs. The pink raptor looks uncomfortable. When Trish convinced Fang to swip the b swap the bass, they did it because they thought the band would get better. Even like getting me in the band was one of Trish's ideas. And when our fir that first show tanked, Reed trails off for a moment. Even though I've admitted it to Fang, the fact that I laughed at her still eats me up a little. It really messed Fang up. They put on a tough face, but the band doing well is important to them. I remember the massive hug Fang gave me back after the show at Dynamo's. And the Trish seeing Fang makes her Ha seeing Fang happy makes her happy. Wise words coming from a guy who just stapled a, a band flyer to a passing truck. <laughs> what the f oh. <laughs> uh, ooh, uh, to the people who are, to the I, I'm guessing it's all like different little groups of people making making these mods, each individual mod, I have to say, <laughs> you know how to make a good joke. <laughs> they all do. <laughs> so, that's so that's why Trish does all this stuff. The flyers, the merchandise, it's all for Fang. It's all for a friend. Reed gives me a final stare before turning back to his stapling. Mulling over Reed's words, I slightly pass them slightly pass up, pass them up on the next set of flyers. Whew, here I go again. <laughs> He's right. I've been spending all I, I have been spending time with Rosa a lot of time. The two of us are practically inseparable at school, spending all our time together at lunch and between classes. Hell, she's even dragged my ass to church every Sunday since th that first time. Oh, rep to Jesus. I can't just lie to her. I just can't lie to her when she gives me those big puppy dog eyes. I don't remember the last time I saw the band practice, or even hung out with Fang. 
Even when I would see, see her passing by in the halls, Trish was always right beside her, waiting to give me a sneer. It was easier for me to spend time with Rosa than to put up with Trish. But to Trish, it probably looked like I was abandoning her best friend. Which I was, in a way. Ugh, nice work, Annan. The second you get a girlfriend, you forget everyone else in the world exists. I may be a good boyfriend to Rosa, but I've been a shitty friend to Fang. Reed? Reed pauses. Allowing the dog, <laughs> he was mistakenly about to staple it. <laughs> Allowing the dog, he was mistakenly about to staple to run away. Bruh, Reed, maybe you're right. I've been spending a lot of time with Rosa, and, well... I take a sudden interest in the sidewalk. Admitting I was wrong isn't something I cherish. If this was my usual acerpent, <laughs> what? A car, a <laughs> I don't know, but Johnny car importing billboard, I would just poorly Photoshop read into an open mouth plant protein and enjoy. <laughs> Took me a second to realize what he was saying. I would just poorly Photoshop read into an open mouth plant protein enjoyer and win the argument. But here, in real life, I can do so no such thing. I ended up ditching the band. I've been a shitty friend of Fang, to everyone really. I'm sorry. Smiling, Reed shoots me a double volley of finger guns. Hey, no worries, bro. You and I have always been chill. Reed leans in conspiratorially, but maybe like Del Fang sometime, huh? He gives me a wink. Sure, Reed. Yeah, thanks. Nodding, Reed finishes stapling his current flyer to the wall of a passing clothing store. <clears throat> and by finishes, I mean he makes a stapling sound with his mouth before letting the flyer flutter to the ground. Good job, Reed. Good job. Good boy. <clears throat> Man, dude, I'm like super starving all of a sudden. Let's get some food or something. I roll my eyes. This is the third food stop of the afternoon. How many flyers do we have left? Ugh, and there's still a third left. Reed's, Reed's caught the scent of some hot dog car or something, so maybe I could. Just got to find a dumpster and... Oops, where did they... Where did this... They're gone! Well, we're, we're done for today. <laughs> Anna, dude, hurry up. They got the chili dogs back. I'll be there in a flash. <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 would try, I tried to think of something that old cartoon Sonic would say. Like some sort of weird little rhyme that he would come up with. And I, I, I'm not nearly as clever as whoever wrote Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. Which is pretty sad for me. And pretty sad for them, too. Cursing, I, l I let the lid of the dumpster drop, clutching each and every one of the accursed flyers. Alright, alright, I'm coming. Between Reed's frequent, frequent pit stops and the sheer volume of the flyers Trish printed out, it's starting to get dark by the time I trundle my way back to my apartment. Luckily, I manage to navigate the streets before any of the truly dangerous crackheads start to come out. Exhausted, I collapse into, onto my bed, too tired to even shitpost properly. At least I don't need to worry about getting food. Reed was buying today, so I've got plenty of leftovers. Good thing, too. My food stores were starting to get low. 
cartwheeling onto my back, I fish my phone out of my pocket. There's only one person I want to talk to now. Hey. You and Stella have a good day? I shoot Rosa the... Lingering on the messaging app. She always takes me right away. Bingo. See, see, we had a great time. The text includes a picture of the two of them. A selfie in what looks like a second-hand bookstore. It looks like Stella has a new, whole new cl collection of manga clutched in her hands. Too distracted by the camera to notice Rosa's, ju Rosa's judgmental stare. Glare. No doubt Rosa found a copy of the good cave painting some <laughs> somewhere at the store. And made another unsuccessful attempt to teach Stella the virtues of Raptor Jesus. How is putting up those flyers? You two are gone forever. <clears throat> Reed was on something and tried to eat everything in sight. Must have gone all over town putting them up too. Dios mio, that boy has an appetite. I don't even know if me madre could make enough for him. The mental image of Reed easing Rosa out of house and home makes me chuckle. Rosa and I continue texting for what feels like hours, sharing the aspects of our day with each other. Something about talking with her makes my fatigue just melt away. By the way, I haven't forgotten my promise from the other night. Mi madre is making more poblano to get tomorrow, my favorite. Would you like to come over and eat with us? A tinge of nerves flutters through my stomach. Meeting my girlfriend's parents? Am I really ready for that? Hopefully I don't get a second father that's threatening to turn me into a basketball. Rosa's whole life is dedicated to her family. If I made a bad impression, I may not come back from it. Eh, fuck. Half the time I don't even know how to act around Rosa, let alone her family. What if I say something spurgy? Or start mumbling crime statistics? Oh, God! Whew. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Or what if everything goes fine? This whole time, I've been telling myself I worry what Rosa's family would think of me. What if I'm just scared? that they might, might, may actually find me tolerable. That my relationship with Rosa would get serious. I can't hide what I feel about Rosa. Hell, I've only ever felt that way about, about, about 2D girls. Ugh. Meeting Rosa's family. Something about that feels like a point of no return. Like, if I do this, then I can never be with. But maybe, like, tell Fang sometime, huh? Tell her what, Reed? I glance back to my phone, where Rosa is no doubt eagerly awaiting my response. Well, Annan, now's the time. I'm in. Ex exhaling, I, I feels like a giant weight has been lifted off my chest. I'm in, Rosa. Every part of me. Oh, Anon, gracias, gracias. You have no idea how happy this makes me. By the way, Anon, do you have a crucifix you can wear? Shit, off to a bad start already. The next day at school passes by in a blur. Rosa and I made plan plans for for dinner with her family that evening. I was so nervous the whole day, I could barely pay any t pay attention to anything. At least it was cut short by an announcement from Principal Spears. The hulking caveman took to the stage, deafening everyone in the, uh, in the audience with a reminder that midterms were coming up and we should take them seriously. With that, the band and I were release, released along with the rest of the seniors. Following the flow of students, we managed to make it to the front lawn of the school. Checking my phone, 
I still got some time before my meetup with Rosa. Bro, so like midterms? You feeling confident? I turn back to where Reed has collapsed onto the grass. Thanks to him, I've managed to maintain a passing grade in Mr. Carl's class. Based Reed and his based math skills. As for the others, the only thing I'm kind of worried about is Mr. Jingo's class. That guy is so, is so zoned out half the time I don't think I've learned the difference between an oboe and an elbow. <laughs> elbow. <laughs> Band humor. <laughs> Not like you could learn anyways. Her, she rolls her eyes with a sneer. Man, the hell is her problem? Fang, what about you? You want to hang out with me and cram for midterms? Mm. We, we go to the library, or oh, my home or something. I think I'm just going to head home. Trisha's face falls, her mouth moving wordlessly for a second. Okay, well... Talk to you later, Fang. Yeah. Fang gives her, Fang, Fang gives her a half-hearted wave as a tiny triceratops collects her things. Uh, take it easy, Trish. Reed's breathing drops to a droning snore. Before she goes, Trish takes an opportunity to flip me off once more before heading home. Yeah, fucker. All right, Fang, take it easy. I'll see you when I see you. Just before I turn away, something darts out to catch my sleeve. It's Fang. And then wait. Fang's hand lingers a moment on my arm before reaching up to brush her hair out of her face. I was thinking, maybe you and I could, like, study at my place. Oh boy. Oh no. I was hoping to avoid this conversation. Uh, Fang looks at me, her amber eyes pleading. She looks uncertain, even nervous, glancing at me sideways as she stares off into the distance. Just like before, in Moe's back room, Fang's wings begin to vibrate. My dad's working a late shift tonight, and my mom is out shopping or whatever, so it could be just the two of us. Swallowing, I managed to work some moisture back, back into my mouth. Fang, that sounds great. Her face snaps to attention, but I already made plans with Rosa to not. Fang sags, her wings falling slack behind her. Her hand twitches reflexively towards her wings before she catches herself. Oh. I'm really, Fang, I'm sorry. <laughs> Wait. I'm really sorry, Fang. Hey, it's fine. She recovers quickly, though, flashing me a smile while jabbing me in the shoulder. Damn it, Fang, that bruise just healed. It's whatever. Just promise me you'll convince her to use a rubber, okay? Oh, a nice cross there, dweeb. Laughing, she turns away. Trish, wait up. I linger a beat longer, watching Fang as she catches up to the purple parasite. The two of them exchange words and I think I can see Trisha's head whip over towards me. The student parking lot is already half empty by the time I get there. The walk over from the front lawn gives me time to reflect on what just happened. On how Fang looked when I turned her down. Oh. This mod does that interrupting shit a whole lot. I think she might. And on over here. 
I see Rosa waiting for me next to her hot pink t t Toyoretta Prius. Her smile beaming e even from this far away. Waving back to her, I try to and let everything I was just thinking of fall away. It all feels like a distraction when I see Rosa. Like some sort of obstacle I needed to get over. But should it? Can I really be friends with Fang if I feel this way? Can we be friends if she feels... Whoa! Rosa nearly tackles me to the ground, meeting me halfway with a running hug. There's me in the via. Come on, hop in. We're going to be late. The two of us fall into, a, fall into step, hands interlocked. So, Anon, are you ready? I toss my bag into Rosa's back seat before turning back to her. The orange ankylosaur smiles at me, lying her hands on my chest. This close, I think she can feel how hard my heart is beating. For me familia, silly. What, Spears talk of midterms got you down? I force myself to chuckle, still trying to banish thoughts of studying with Fang from my mind. Nah, I'm too big-brained to worry over midterms. I try and force a smile to my face. Rosa peers suspiciously towards me. And then, are you okay? You look a little bothered. Nah, it's it's nothing. So much for hiding it. Oh, Manevio, you are very bad at lying. Rosa taps a staccato beat against my chest with her claws. Seriously, you can tell me. Trust me. Rosa turns to me, her eyes searching every part of my face for a clue as to what's troubling me. It's just... A part of, a part of me wants to blurt out the truth, tell Rosa everything that I'm feeling. Not just so she can hear, but, but so, so I can as well. Uh, taking a deep breath, I steel myself to tell her about me and Fang, about our friendship, our... Um... Looking at Rosa, I feel the words die in my throat. I can't do it. She looks so concerned about me, so worried about my happiness, I find myself instinctu instinctually wa wanting to make everything okay for her. Looking at her, I realize I want nothing more than to make her happy. I couldn't do that to her, burden her with my own problems. Besides, she has enough on her plate, what with her mom's illness and all. I'm sorry, Rosa, but maybe one day. Reaching down, I give her hand a squeeze before, before pulling it to my lips with a soft kiss. I'm just nervous about meeting your family is all. It's the first time I'm meeting a girl's family. What if I mess up or do something to offend them? Laughing, it's Rosa's turn to pull my hands down for a kiss. Oh, Anna, you are so sweet. Stupido, but sweet. But I'm sure me familia would love you. All you have to do is be yourself. Never, ever be yourself. It will end in disaster. I promise you that. You won me over, didn't you? Somehow. That is, that is true. Somehow I was able to land someone as special as Rosa. If I remember correctly, you fell on top of me. Rosa's, Rosa gives a smack across the head, laughing. Eh, no talking about that in front of me, Familia. Nuzzling herself against my chest, Rosa slips her arms behind my back. At this point, most of the other students have left, leaving us alone in the parking lot. The wild heart of Volcadera has, temp has tempered off somewhat. Oh, the wild heat of Volcadera has tempered off somewhat, but the wind still carries a memory of the earlier temperature. Leaning back against the car, I let my eyes close, 
lulled into a daze by the warmth of not only the afternoon, but of the absolutely wonderful girl currently holding on to me. It's nice. Okay, it's more than nice. It's perfect. Oh, you're wearing it already. Rose's voice knocks me out of my moment. Hmm? My gift. She taps the golden cross hanging around my neck. It's a gift Rosa slipped into my locker earlier today. The note that accompanied it is still tucked safely in my pocket. Remember my promise, Minovio. You didn't have to wear it until we got in front of me familia, Anon. I know, I know, but I wanted to, you know. You went through the effort of picking it out for me, so I figured. I shrug. It's not like I went out of my way or anything. But it still felt nice, giving a getting gift from someone special. Someone who cares. At the very least, I'll have some protection against those vam vampires. <laughs> vampire sources roaming around town. For a moment, it looks like Rose's eyes are going to roll right out of her head. Then, the dam bursts. Snorting, Rosa descends into a series of giggles. I knew she couldn't resist for long. I'm in the Villa Santanto. Stepping back, Rosa takes both my hands in hers, giving them a squeeze. Well, it means a lot to me, Anon. Gracias. Rosa sighs, gazing up at me through hooded eyes, swaying back and forth. Man, when she looks at me like that... That's all I can do, not to grin like an idiot back at her. At first, I thought I would have to hide who I am around her. I have to try and be an upstanding, serious boyfriend, like Nazer. But now I realize she was right. I just need to be myself. I have nothing to hide from her. Except, a loud rattling interrupts the mood. It's Rosa's phone buzzing against the dash of her car. Swearing, Rosa leans into the open car. Hey, Anon, we're late. Rosa, go access... Rosa slides behind the wheel in a flash, with myself not much further behind her on the passenger side. I can barely manage to buckle myself in before Rosa tears out of the parking lot. Raptor Jesus Christ, are all Dino's as bad drivers? <laughs> hey, Morella, Morella! A group of passing students dive for cover as Rosa cuts the corner. Maybe I won't have to meet her family after all because I'll be dead in a ditch on the way there. <laughs> I'm glad Rosa gave me this cross, which she did. Oh, that at least gives me something to pray over as I watch my life flash before my eyes. Well, uh, that was a sudden ending. <laughs> well, I'm sure they had a great time. Oh well, uh, I'll see you on the next mod.